realize certainly how busy you are and the demands on your schedule. I want to appreciate you taking the time, sir. Um, triads, Naval Construction Group 1, Commodore, Command Mass Chief, NAFAC Engineering and Expeditionary Warfare Center, NCTC Port Wainimi, NMCB 3 and 5, and Underwater Construction Team 2. Thank you as well, Chaplain, for the invocation. I'd be remiss if I did not thank and recognize the team responsible for executing the numerous parts of basic class training. The SECO staff, along with the extended staff comprised of chiefs and officers from the Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering, Naval Facilities Institute, Defense Acquisition University, and Marines from Navy Expeditionary Combat Command, and Corpsmen and Seabees for NMCB-3. So just a brief round of applause for everyone that helped get these uh, students through. So all of these members from class administration and logistics to teaching from the podium, field exercises, and student advising, it is definitely a true uh, team effort to get everyone through. My last word of thanks goes to our spouses. To all our spouses, thank you for your dedication and sacrifices for our Navy and our nation and appreciate you supporting our service members here today. On August 12, 1946, 15 students of SECO's Basic Class 1 graduated from a 10-week course of instruction at Camp Perry located in Williamsburg, Virginia. I invite you after the ceremony to look at SECO's The Early Years and other historical displays inside the lobby of the building behind me. Additionally, if you haven't gone already, the CB Museum located in Port Wainimi, right outside the main gate, is an incredible museum with a lot of our rich history. I highly encourage you to visit the museum uh, often throughout your naval careers, as we talked about yesterday, to keep yourself grounded and humble. So today we'll be adding 34 new Civil Engineer Corps officers to this prestigious list of CEC officers who have graduated from C-Course Basic Course over the last 78 years. So just a little bit about 276. So there are 34 new CEC officers, three lieutenant junior grades, 31 ensigns, 27 came from Officer Candidate School, one from the United States Naval Academy, one from United States Merchant Marine Academy, three ROTC, and one Seaman to Admiral, and one LDO. So the degrees, we'll start with the best first, architect. <laughs> Sorry, Chief. Uh, and engineers in the following disciplines, aerospace, biological, civil and structural, electrical, marine ocean, mechanical, and robotics. Ten officers had prior enlisted experience in the armed forces totaling 73 years altogether. Duty stations are headed to Naval Mobile Construction Battalions 1, 3, 4, 5, 11, and 133. CBMU 202. Public Works Departments on Navy and Marine Corps and Joint Installations Around the World, FIAT at 29 Palms, FIAT at Camp Butler, Camp Pendleton, Marianas, Roik Camp Lejeune, Roik Norfolk Naval Shipyard, PWD Bahrain, PWD Mechanicsburg, Washington, Dahlgren, Norfolk, Corpus Christi, Diego Garcia, Dahlgren, Ventura County right here, Kitsap, and PWD Pearl Harbor and MCAS Iwakuni, Japan. So over the last 15 weeks, the class is trained to prepare for service as CEC officers. And that training included an introductory to war fighting, national defense strategy, and operational plans. An overview of the CEC and Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command. Introductions to construction technology and project management. Introductions to Naval Construction Force operations and a field training exercise. Introduction to Utilities, Public Works, and Installation Management, Construction Safety, Division Officer Leadership and Character Focus Curriculum that highlight the Navy Corps values. So finally, the Basic Class 276. It's been an absolute pleasure. As I told you yesterday in my closing comments, you are my last Basic Class before I turn over the reins to a very talented officer. But I want to congratulate you on all of your accomplishments in the last couple of months. It's been an absolute pleasure to get to know you, and I'm very excited to turn you out to the fleet. So in just about an hour, it'll be your time for you to take your rightful place in the fleet in this great Navy of ours. Time for you to step up and be the CEC officers the Navy needs you to be so that we'll be ready for the next high-end fight. 
I wish you all good luck and Godspeed. It's now my honor to introduce our guest speaker, Rear Admiral Vanderly has had an impressive career, and I'm going to go through it a little bit, sir. I know how much you love that. So he's got a bachelor, <laughs> he's got a bachelor of science in mechanical engineering from Calvin College, master's of civil and environmental engineering from Stanford. He was a graduate of basic class 213. That's when the photographs were black and white. <laughs> I graduated after you, I think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, and of course, he served all over the world, including his operational tours on the USS Michigan, NMCB-7, NMCB-4, has had a, just a ton of facilities and staff tours throughout an impressive career. Trident Training Facility in Bangor, Puget Sound, Naval Air Station, Keflavec, Iceland, uh, Navy Installations Command. He was the Executive Assistant to Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Installation Environment. Naval Station Norfolk was a head detailer, NAVFAC Atlantic. He's commanded at many levels and echelons to include NMCB-4, Naval... Oh, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. We get any five out here? Five. five. There we go. That's better. That's how it's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm likely going to get fired after this, so I'm looking for a job if anyone knows. Uh, so, as I said, the Chief uh, has uh, commanded at many levels. NMCB-4, Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command at Midland. Yeah, Naval Facilities <laughs> Engineering <laughs> Systems Command, uh, Atlantic. Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command, Pacific. And Admiral Vandley is, of course, the 46th Commander of Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command and the Chief of Civil Engineers. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Dean Vanderley. All right, well, thank you much for that introduction, uh, Pete. And uh, so <clears throat> remind me at the end, so he hasn't got fired yet, and I'll, I'll tell a good story at the end if I remember about, uh, about uh, you know, if he didn't get fired for that one, then there's no way he's going to get fired just for making some remarks. So. <laughs> um, so first of all, you know, great to be here. It's always nice to be at Seacoast where every CEC officer begins their career. As uh, Captain Maculin mentioned, I was here 26 years ago in a basic class, um, which I think you were here more like 30 years ago. Part of the reason I was here sooner than that, I've been in the Navy for 33 years, but I spent seven years driving submarines before I uh, started doing what I'm doing. For those of you who are prior enlisted, some of you guys have similar backgrounds where you did some other things, which uh, hopefully will be a part of your career that you can build on as you uh, do great things in the Civil Engineer Corps. Um, I'd like to thank the people that made this happen. So Commander Honick and uh, Lieutenant Kwan and Pete, thank you so much for everything you've done for this class. And uh, most of all, the basic class, I know you guys didn't have much choice of being here, but um, this, is a, this is a jumping off point for the rest of your career. And I think it's a, a great thing to celebrate and, uh, and acknowledge. So whenever I, I uh, do these things, I always think back. And you know, I've been at you know, some number of graduations myself, just like you. I graduated from high school. I even graduated from kindergarten, college, Seacoast, OCS. And um, when I think back, I can remember almost nothing of, of any of the commencement speeches that were given. Most of the time, I can't even remember who gave the speech. So I, I use that to kind of humble myself and to realize that no matter what great eloquence I might say up here, Odds are you won't remember any of it, and you may not even remember I was here. So along those lines, I try to do something that's going to make it more interesting that you may at least remember I'm here and may even remember a little bit what I said. So what happens when you're in these positions is you know, I have an executive assistant that writes speeches for me, and one of my old executive assistants is here, so he'll smile because I used to make fun of him all the time in the speeches he would write for me. And they were all actually very good. John Pergerson was a good speechwriter, wrote great speeches. But I started to become self-aware enough to realize that reading those speeches was super boring. And that you know, I could actually physically watch people start to nod off as I would read through the speech. So I, I don't do that anymore. I, I take the talking points from it and then kind of riff off that. And I've I found that I lose much less of the audience. It's kind of a safety issue. Um, so, so hopefully you guys find this more interesting. And uh, so one of the things I'll do at the end is I'll, I'll give you guys a chance to ask a question. So whoever, you know, you can be thinking about what question you want to ask. You can ask me anything in the world, and I'll answer it at the end. So be thinking about that. If it's a really good question, I'll even give you a coin. Um, 
But what I was going to talk about today was, so I mentioned that I've, I've, I've sat through some significant number of commencement speeches. There's actually only one of them that I remember very much, and that's when I graduated from Stanford. Um, the person who gave my commencement speech there in 2005 was Steve Jobs. And so that was part of the reason I remember it is he's obviously somebody who, uh, who is, has a lot to say and is well-respected. And also I gave a speech that I thought was really, really good. You guys can Google, it's like 15 minutes, a pretty good speech. But a couple of the points he made, I found impactful to me, which is why I still remember him. And I think that they're applicable to you guys today as you start your careers. Um, one of the points he made was, he called it connecting the dots. And what he meant by connecting the dots was, when, you, when you're looking forward, you can't really connect the dots. But when you look back, you can kind of connect the dots. And the dots that you connect are what you learn along the way and how that all kind of comes together to, uh, to prepare for you for what you're doing now. And one of, the, one of the stories that he gave, so if you don't know, Steve Jobs actually never graduated from college. He went to college for a little, so it was a little bit of a slap in the face at Stanford, right? So he's there to speak at Stanford and he wasn't even a college graduate himself. He said one of the reasons he didn't graduate from college, it was too expensive and a waste of his time and he didn't want to do it. So it's kind of funny that somebody was saying that at Stanford. But one of the things he did do is he went to college for a little while and audited some classes. One of the classes he audited was calligraphy. And one could argue that calligraphy appears to be the kind of a course that wouldn't have a lot of practical use for most people. But then he talked about the fact that as he developed the Macintosh computer, his, his love of calligraphy that was developed there was what was used to develop the myriad of fonts that were part of uh, the Macintosh and that he acknowledged that Windows just copied and now is part of uh, the Microsoft Word and everything else we have today. So you can thank that calligraphy class for all the myriad of different fonts that you can choose now when you're uh, publishing documents. And he used that to say that you know, no one, at the time, you could have never connected that dot to say that that was going to be a useful um, piece of information, but looking back, it was. And similarly, when I look back at my career, you know, one of the things that, that I've really tried to do throughout my career is to be curious and to ask a lot of questions. I readily admit that I'm never the smartest person in the room, but I, hopefully I'm at least one of the more curious people in the room. And when, when things come up, I ask and try to make sure that I understand, even if it's something that may not be you know, necessarily particularly applicable to the issue at hand. But again, looking back, I can connect the dots to understand how understanding those little pieces come together to something that's really valuable. And, you know, I will tell you, so, so, you know, from my experience, you know, like the first day I showed up on the submarine, I had a lot of school, but I rapidly figured out that I had no idea what I was doing. And so I had to ask an awful lot of questions and figure it out. And, and with time, I felt like I ultimately became a somewhat competent submariner. And then I lateral transferred to the Civil Engineer Corps. And for a little while, I felt like it was the stupidest decision ever because I went from, you know, what I consider to be a relatively competent submariner to a CEC officer who had no idea what I was doing. And, and at this point, I was a relatively senior lieutenant. So by rank, I should have known what I was doing, but I really felt like I didn't. But I asked an awful lot of questions, had some people that took me under the wing and taught me a lot. And over time, was able to put all those things together. And then in subsequent tours, similarly, um, you know, my very first uh, time in the CBs was as S3 operations officer. That may not have been a, a, a great situation in hindsight, but I learned an awful lot. And after a little while, I think I became a somewhat competent operations officer. And, and that repeated throughout my career again and again. When I was commanding officer of Midland, that was the first time I'd ever been in a FEC. But again, I asked an awful lot of questions. And by the end, I think I became a somewhat competent FEC CO. Um, and I would say, offer that to you to say, you know, you guys are now going to go off to all kinds of places, CB battalions and wherever else. And I will guarantee you're going to feel like, if you're feeling like me, you're going to initially, you're going to have days you feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. But ask a lot of questions, learn, and put those dots together. And sometime later, I will tell you that after you've been doing this for 5, 10, 15, 20, or maybe 33 years like me, the dots will come together and you'll start to understand how it all works and it'll make you a very effective CC officer, very effective naval officer, and uh, you know, professionally uh, very, uh, very uh, accomplished. So that's my first point is connect the dots. Um, a second point that, uh, that Steve Jobs made was do what you love. And I'll take a little bit of a twist on that. So, so his point is you know, find something, do what you love, which I think is something we all hope to do. But the reality is, you know, when I was a kid, I loved basketball. 
it became very clear early on that no one was going to pay me to play basketball. So that wasn't going to be, you know, my life, my life goal. So do what you love has to be taken with a grain of salt here. Um, so, th so what I will tell you is learn to love what you do is, is the, is the riff that I take on it. And when I look back at my own career, so, you know, I ended up in the Navy just because I was a college kid who wasn't sure what he wanted to do and the Navy seemed cool. There was literally not much more thought than that. I had no intent of ever making a career. Um, my intent was always to get out after five years. So I did my five years on submarines. I enjoyed it. It was good. I was on my way out. And then I've, somebody introduced me to the Civil Engineer Corps. I'd always, there was a lot of construction in my family. My grandfather and uncles ran construction companies. So that seemed cool too. So I decided to do it. And here I still am, you know, 26 years later and still haven't, haven't quite gotten out and do what I ultimately was planning to do, which was get out and maybe be involved in the construction industry. Um, but through all that, um, you know, I, I learned to love it. And it wasn't, it wasn't that I came in the Navy and, and that the Navy had always been my thing that I had always wanted to do. Hopefully maybe some of you have that, that, that your love is the Navy and that's all you ever wanted to do and now here you are and you're gonna love what you do. Many of you are probably more like me and you somehow have found yourself in this position and you probably haven't decided whether you love it or not. And there'll be days that you probably don't really feel like you love it so much. Um, I have days like that. So, so my wife's an astronomer and, and she works very hard and she's clearly much smarter than me. Um, and she'll have days where she'll come home and say, I want to open a cupcake shop. That's her way of dealing with stress, right? That she wants to quit doing what she's doing and she'd rather just make, make cupcakes for a living. And then every once in a while, I'll come home after a, after a day and I'll say, um, you got room for a second in your, in your cupcake shop because I think I'd like to join you. So I have days like that too. But you know, like all of us, we have to learn how to take those days and take a deep breath, go home, have some dinner, and then the next day is another day. Um, but over time, I've realized that you know, what I've done for the last 33 years is something that I really, really love. And maybe a little bit of connecting the dots, a little of it's um, growing to love what you do. But you know, I, the Civil Engineer Corps, you get to work with a lot of really, really great people. Some of them are the audience here, the commanding officers, the mass chiefs. Um, you'll, the, uh, the folks at NAFAC, the folks across the Navy, civilians and military, you work with a lot of really, really good people. You do a lot of really, really interesting stuff. So I've uh, you know, lived in Iceland and I lived all over the United States. I've deployed all over Africa, all over Europe, all over the Middle East. Um, some nice places, some less nice things, places. But you do a lot of interesting stuff. I've, you know, in 2003, I've drove through the, uh, the oil fields of, uh, of southern Iraq when they were on fire and uh, built schools all over Iraq. Joined some of the guys here building uh, Ford operating bases all over Afghanistan. Um, upgrade, you know, built dry docks in our, in our shipyards, you know, right now. Done a lot of really, really cool things, working with some really, really cool people. And now wherever I go across the Navy, I feel like I have friends there. And so what you're doing is something that I think you'll really, really grow to love. So take it all in perspective. You'll have some days that are hard days, but with perspective, hopefully you all really, really grow to love it. And you'll, uh, you'll be someone like me that can look back and say, I really, really love what I do. I might not love it every day, but when I look back and when I look at what's in the future, I really, really love what I do. So that's my second piece of advice is grow to love what you do. And if you don't love it, then there's other things you can do too. But I think that if you give it a shot, you'll really grow to love what you do in the Civil Engineer Corps in the Navy. <clears throat> so with that, um, I promised you a couple of things. One, one was a good story about Captain Maculin. So this, this is a good example of what you may or may not want to do as a Lieutenant Commander. So I tell this story a bunch of times, but so a bunch of you heard it already, but it's a really good story, so I like to keep telling it. Plus, I'm the last one who speaks, so he doesn't get to rebut it. Um, so, so I mentioned that I was the uh, operations officer for in, in NMCB-7. And uh, so I, I, we, we, uh, we went to the desert during the invasion, did a lot of great stuff, came back, and uh, then I was, I was going to go to grad school after that. So I mentioned I, was, I, I spent a lot of time on submarines, so I was a little behind perpetually in my career. So I went to grad school really late. So I was an S3, and I went to going to grad school after that. And things were, things were setting up really good. So we were supposed to go to FEX in July, you know, in, in, in Mississippi. So Camp Shelby in July and August. Any of you guys have ever been in Mississippi in July and August? It's super awesome, right? Like 100 degrees, 100% humidity. It's fantastic. 
But I was going to avoid that because Captain Maculin, then Lieutenant Commander Maculin, was my relief. And he was coming out of a cushy grad school situation in Maryland. He was going to come relieve me in July, take the battalion to Fex. I was going to head off to, you know, beautiful, beautiful Palo Alto, California. I had like a couple months of gap there, so I was going to have a really relaxed PCS, take a bunch of leave, and just, you know, relax in Southern California after uh, having just come back from Iraq and all the things we're doing in CVs. Until word starting to come back that apparently Lieutenant Commander Maculin had some amount of work he had to do associated with some sort of grad school project, um, which sounded like a little bit of a story, but somehow he, he worked this into some situation where he was unable to report to NMCB-7 until sometime after FEX. So I ended up doing three, you know, two to three weeks in Camp Shelby, Mississippi that I had not planned on. Um, and it was every bit of the 100 and some degrees, 100% of humidity you could have expected in uh, Mississippi in July. And so uh, I have, uh, you know, Captain Maculin to thank for that glorious uh, two to three weeks in, uh, in Mississippi. So again, and he survived. He's a captain now. We're still good friends and we laugh about it. And I, and I do have to admit that he, he got fired off to Iraq right after that. So it's not like he had a cushy tour either. But he, he, and he did a lot of great things at Enver CV7. But... I, I will tell you that that's a good story to tell about Captain Maculin. And it's a good example of, hopefully, if you guys have long careers, you'll be able to tell stories like that about your peers. And someday when you're up on a, up on a uh, stage like me, you can tell embarrassing stories about your friends. It's part of the joy and part of why we love doing what we do. And someday when you retire, you get the last word. So at some point, you know, Captain Maculin will retire. I might retire. I'll, I'll probably retire first, though, so he'll never get a chance where he can tell bad stories about me, but I won't invite him to speak at my retirement because uh, <laughs> he'll have too many stories. Um, all right, and so the last thing is when you guys can ask a question. All right, fire away. Stand up and ask a question. Hmm. That's good. So its question was, what, what experience from my submarine career um, helped me on my uh, in civil engineer career? And so I will tell, so Ensign Butler, another I can tell, I don't really have embarrassing stories about him, but he was actually a prior enlisted submariner, right? And I actually take credit for bringing him into the Navy because he somehow, you know, got my contact info and uh, we were able to talk and I was able to talk him into the CEC. So hopefully I uh, didn't lead you astray, but I don't think I did. The other, that's the other thing I would say is we need more ensigns. Uh, we're, uh, so you guys need to all talk to your friends and tell them how great it is in CC and bring them in. We need, we need more instances. Um, so first of all, so what, what do you learn? And this is a good example of connecting the dots, I guess. So one would argue that learning how to drive submarines and being a very competent submariner maybe has little to do with managing construction projects later. But, but I will tell you that what I learned on a submarine when it came to, uh, I mentioned a little bit, so you, you, you show up to a submarine, you, they make you a division officer, you rapidly realize that you have no idea what you're doing and you have an awful lot to learn. And the, uh, the people that you're put in charge of leading are A, mostly older than you and B, no way more than you do. And so you learn that skill about how to, uh, how to lead from a position of, uh, of being less informed and less experienced than the people you're leading. And you guys are all gonna jump into that exact same situation here very soon. So I learned skills like that. I learned skills about being accountable. So as a division officer, you know, stuff breaks. Um, your commanding officer held you accountable for fixing it, even though you usually had no idea how to do it, but you had a bunch of folks working with you. You had a, hopefully a good chief, some good first classes, petty officers who would help to explain to you what it was gonna take to fix that piece of gear, and then hopefully set you up for success as you went back to the, your uh, commanding officer to explain to him how you were gonna fix that gear. Another good thing to learn is, those people you're leading, don't piss them all off because then when you go back to your CO, you'll find out they may not have set you up quite as well as you would have hoped. So you also got to lead in a way that uh, doesn't alienate those you're leading. So those are all skills that I learned, I think, that uh, you know, ultimately when I came into the C Civil Engineer Corps, those same sort of skills about being accountable, um, doing your homework. Um, one thing about Civil Engineer Corps is it's very, very important that we're technically competent. And hopefully you guys have figured that out during Seacoast. Tech, you know, CEC officers that don't know what they're doing are CEC officers that the Navy doesn't need. So you better learn to you know, be technically competent, know what you're talking about. 
And that's also, that's also something, those of you who have any experience in the submarine community, that's also another skill that's very, very important in the submarine community. You better know what you're talking about. And so those are all things that I learned there that, again, weren't necessarily directly applicable, but are things that I've found throughout my Navy career are super important. So with that, I got a coin for you because that was a pretty good question. Um, so just to wrap up, thank you all so much for being here. Seacoast class, congratulations. I wish I was in your shoes. You hopefully have another 30 years in front of you to do some really cool stuff in the Navy and the Civil Engineer Corps. I've loved every minute of it. Hopefully you do too. For all the families that are here, um, congratulations to your uh, you know, sons, daughters, significant others, whatever your connection is to them. Uh, it's a big accomplishment to get where they're at. And hopefully you, you'll uh, embrace being part of the adventure as they go all over the world and hopefully do some really cool things. So thank you. Thank you, Admiral Vanderlei. The Navy takes great pride in recognizing the outstanding performance of its personnel. In keeping with this tradition, we would like to recognize those students who have displayed outstanding character and competence as evaluated by their academic performance, leadership, physical fitness, personal initiative, and enthusiasm. These distinguished graduates represent the top 15% of their class. Captain Maculin will now join Admiral Vanderlei at the center of the stage to recognize and congratulate the honor graduate and distinguished graduates of basic class 276. I was not an honor graduate. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys don't feel bad, there's hope for you. The honor graduate receives a membership in the Society of American Military Engineers, a Seacoast coin, and a copy of Can Do, the story of the builder fighter Seabees of World War II, signed by Admiral Vanderlei. The honor graduate of Basic Class 276 is Ensign Cody Valdivia. Good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Great job. The following officers are graduating with distinction. Each distinguished graduate receives a congratulatory letter and a Seacoast coin. I was also not a distinguished graduate. <laughs> <laughs> the distinguished graduates are Ensign Brian Dutzman. Thank you, sir. Good job, Thank you. Ensign Young Chan Kim. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, you're good. Okay. Ensign James Lardner. Congratulations. Awesome job. Ensign Mitchell Thiel. Our next award not only recognizes an outstanding basic student, but also a very special member of the Seacoast family. Seacoast was fortunate to have an individual who, de who dedicated her entire adult life to the faithful service of our country, our Navy, and in particular, our Seacoast students. Having stood the watch faithfully for nearly 45 years, she graduated literally thousands of CEC officers, including every current active duty and reserve Civil Engineer Corps Admiral. She's an American patriot of the highest order, and among the very few individuals who have officially been made an honorary CB. As a reflection of her enduring presence and enthusiasm, Seacoast has established the Commodore Hunt Commemorative Esprit de Corps Award. The narrative of the plaque reads, in recognition of those members of basic classes past who personified the spirit and, of camaraderie and teamwork, demonstrated an infectious and unwavering positive attitude, and distinguished themselves through their personal energies in support of their class and shipmates. The student from each basic class who best meets these characteristics has their name inscribed on this plaque. It is our pleasure to announce the newest recipient of the Commodore Hunt Award. 
Ensign Connor Gladio. Basic Class 276, it is now our pleasure to recognize your efforts and present your diplomas. Admiral Vanderlei and Captain Macklin will present the diplomas. Lieutenant Kwan, please prepare the class for graduation. Lieutenant Junior Grade, William Calder, PWD Dahlgren. <laughs> Lieutenant Junior Grade, Vin Nguyen, FIAD Camp Pendleton. <laughs> Lieutenant Junior Grade, Brady Ruder, NAFAC Marianas. There's so much work in Guam, the whole island's going to sink, so you got a lot to do. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Ensign Rashad Abdul Majid, PWD Bahrain. Rah. <laughs> <laughs> Got big shoes to fill. Ensign Cody Adams, NMCB3. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ensign Jonathan Baez, NMCB11. Ensign Brenton Butler, PWD Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Sir? Great Thank job. you. I appreciate it. Ensign Jared Chua, NMCB 5. Rough 5. Rough 5. Ensign Clay Copeland, NMCB 133. <laughs> 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 not coming back. <laughs> Ensign Daisy Cruz Cordero, FIAD Camp Pendleton. Ensign Brian Dutzman, PWD Corpus. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, same here. Rock. Good Thank job. You. Ensign Connor Gladio, NMCB3. Ensign Matthew Gribb, PWD Washington. Ensign Brennan Hare, PWD Diego Garcia. Thank you. 
I will throw it in that game. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Ensign Thomas Holt, Roy Camp Lejeune. Ensign Benjamin Horney, PWD, Ventura County. Ensign Sean Wong, PWD, Kitsap. God's country out there. Thank you. Ensign Aaron Kalani, Marine Corps Air Station, Iwakuni. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, Mr. Bush. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Ensign Young Chan Kim, Marine Corps Base, Camp Butler. Ensign Lisa Carabo, Roik, Norfolk Naval Shipyard. Ensign James Lardner, PWD Dahlgren. Ensign Arizona Lenski, NMCB1. Ensign Patrick Littlefield, PWD, Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. Ensign Lillian Milner, PWD Norfolk. Ensign Joshua Nakai Chapman, Roy Camp Lejeune. Ensign Forrest Pelton, NMCB 11. Ensign Derek Rudder, CBMU 202. Ensign Gabriella Slentz, NMCB3. Thank you, sir. Ensign Mitchell Thiel, PWD, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Ensign Thuan Tran, FIAD 29 Palms. Ensign Theodore Tillman, PWD, Joint Base, Pearl Harbor Hickam. Ensign Cody Valdivia, Roy Camp Lejeune. Congratulations. Ensign Jonathan Wallace, NMCB 5.
Ensign Jack Williams, NMCB4. Two raw four. Two raw four. As Basic Class 276 stands on the threshold of an extraordinary journey, there remains one final hurdle they must overcome. The rescue of their 35th classmate. <laughs> Command Mass Chief, prepare the fire. You guys better make it good. Here's me less, less risk than what you might have thought. Yeah. <laughs> He's not, doesn't want to light up. Well. All right. <laughs> Basic class 276, we stand by, ready to receive your final assignment. Attention to the CB song. We're the CBs of the Navy. We can build and we can fight. We'll pave our way to victory. Guard it day and night. And we promise to remember the 7th of December. We're the CBs of the Navy, bees of the seven seas. Hoorah! Hoorah! So, as I understand it, there was uh, Hold on. some. Uh, you guys can't leave yet. You really want to just come back? <laughs> <laughs> so, as I understand it, this has had some meaningful position within your class associated with some cartoon that I've never seen. <laughs> The workmanship is questionable. The math chiefs can get after you about that. But um, apparently, to retrieve it, you had to sing the CD song. And so, when I mentioned about connecting the dots, one of the dots you connect is Grace. And so, despite you know maybe not the best uh, rendering of the CD song that I ever heard, <laughs> you guys were recruited because of your great singing skills, and I'm sure they'll your CD song singing will improve over the years. So, we will gracious you know show the grace that we have learned throughout our careers and give you your. Planky back. So, who's, who's the leader who would accept Planky back? Why did you lost him in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> we got him! <laughs> Basic class 276, please return to your seats.
and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal Father, thank you for allowing us to recognize the achievements this group has made. I ask that you will take them, everyone, safely home. For those who are going out to celebrate with their friends and loved ones, I ask that you will provide sound judgment in the decisions they will make. Thank you for being here with us. Pray. Amen. Please take your seats. Admiral Vanderlei, on behalf of the graduates and Seacoast, thank you for participating in today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us both in person and online to honor our graduates. Please concludes the broadcasted portion of our ceremony. As we mentioned the ceremony, the society.